So we're going to get started in AutoCAD and we have ortho on, O snap on. We're going to make a regular front view. So just go ahead and go to the line command and you guys are already used to just typing in the amounts. So direct coordinate entry method, we click one time to start the line and we just type in 114, 114. And remember this is in metric, so our line is very long. I'm gonna scale this up so we can see it. So I have my 114 line that shows my width. I know I need to go 38 up, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. It's like we're drawing a regular front view. So we're just going up 38. Okay, and then I know that I can come over 19, and we've drawn these several times, so, you know, some of these dimensions are going to be very easy for you. Uh, the 13 down is what I'm looking for here, so I'm going to go straight down 13. I know that can come over and connect, and then um, I don't really know how far to go down right here, so I'm going to go back to this 114. I can go up 19 from there. I can come back in this direction, 16. And then of course that meets. So I'm basically just drawing a regular front view. So now whenever this line comes over and this line comes down, I know that those meet. So everything that is a height dimension or a width dimension, I went ahead and put in here. And I'm going to leave out the hole just for now. So anything that is a depth dimension, we're going to go back at an angle. And let's go ahead and do a, we'll do, let's do a 15 degree angle on this one. Okay. And we're going to do full size. We're going to do an oblique cavalier at a 15 degree angle. So in order to get 15 degrees, we're gonna have to change our polar tracking. So remember polar that we talked about in the very beginning of class, we're gonna come up here and change that to every 15 and it'll do every 15 increments. So 30, 45, 60 and so on. So when you do that, it should turn polar on. If it does not turn polar on, just make sure polar is highlighted in blue. And you'll notice it turns ortho off. So we have to be careful about which lines we're making when we don't have ortho on. All right, the first thing that we wanna do is go back, let's go back this full 57. So if we see the full 57, we know we can come back from this corner and this corner, a full 57. So what I mean by going back, this is our receding line. These are the lines that go back at an angle. And we're going to come here and make sure that we're in 15. Okay, It's going to have a green line pop up, but it also has a green line pop up at 30 and at 45 and 60 because it's goes every 15 degree increment. So just make sure you're at the correct angle and then type in 57. Again, there's no offset in obliques except for when you do the front view because uh, we're already at an angle and you can't offset and keep that angle. So we have a line there. We're gonna go ahead and we could actually copy this line instead of making it again. So we can click on it and we can come right here to copy. And our base point is where we are now. So we have a common endpoint here. So I'm going to click on that common endpoint. And I'm going to come up here to this endpoint and go ahead and um, click there. I know I need a line here. So I'll go ahead and click at all of these corners that go back at an angle. I could even click here for it, but we're going to end up making a line that's 38 there. So I'm, I'm going to leave it alone. So what we needed was all of these back 
endpoints, okay? So when we start making these other lines, we're pretty much just connecting the dots, but we want to make sure that um, we're doing it correct. So if you don't feel like you can trust yourself, go ahead and turn ortho back on. Uh, but since our lines are all the same length, you can actually just snap to the endpoints. So let's go ahead and do that and just fill this in and we'll come back and take out what we don't need. So now we, we have kind of our overall shape. We know that we need to go back 38 right here. So at that 16 mark, we're gonna go back 38 at that 15 degrees. So make sure polar is back on. We're gonna click on that line command again. We're gonna make sure we're at 15 degrees and we're gonna type in 38, enter. Now here's where it gets tricky because this comes straight across. So if you are still in polar, just make sure that angle is zero. And then this is gonna come straight down. Okay. Now we could go straight back across that 16. Uh, we already have this line so we can copy it down and um, that way you're not making a mistake with the angle. So I'm copying it from this top endpoint to the bottom endpoint. And that gives us a place to connect to. A lot of these lines we can copy over. So now we have this surface here. We can actually trim out what we don't need. All right, so we're, we're starting to get the general shape. Uh, we still need to do some up here in the back. So we know that we need to come from that back corner 28. So that's what we need to do next. We'll, we'll just make a line over top of that line, come 28, and uh, give us something to meet for the other line that's 13 down. So just come back in that same angle over top of that line, type in 28, enter. Make sure you are at zero when you make this line to connect. And I'm just gonna make the line straight down. I don't really know how far to make it down, but I do know how far to come you know, from this corner. So I can come back to line, make sure I'm in that 15 degree angle and come straight over. I can do the same thing on the other side or I could just copy this. Uh, before I copy, I'm gonna trim just so I don't have too much back there and get confused. So I trimmed off what little bit that I needed to. I can copy both of those lines from this endpoint to this endpoint. Okay. And then I can see that I still need a line here, but I already have my endpoints there to, to show where it's at. So now I, I basically have all of my shape. And I, I'm just trimming out. So now I have the same object drawn as an oblique. Okay, and I, I probably still have two lines here. So I just make sure I don't have too many lines over top of one another. Now, oblique circles are very, very difficult. So we're gonna leave the circles off for now. Uh, we would have to actually kind of box it in like we do a sketch circle and just make an ellipse. So we could do it, but I want you just to understand how obliques work. We're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on these, but you will see them. Uh, so this is an oblique cavalier. Let's go ahead and label it. So you haven't done a lot of text commands, but if you come up here to the A, you have multi-line text and single line text. 
So we're going to click on single line text and read your command bar. It says specify the start point. So we're going to click one time for the start point. Specify the angle. We don't want to rotate our text, so we're just going to hit enter here. And then a cursor pops up and lets us label this. So in all caps, let's put oblique cavalier. Just so you guys can know the difference. And before you hit escape, because this is very important. Are you guys listening? Good. It's very important. Before you hit escape, click off of what you just typed. Because if you hit an escape command while you're typing that current line, it's going to delete all of it. So click off of it. It'll make a new text box like you're going to type something else. But then you can hit escape. Now my words are very very small because uh, we set it up for inches instead of metric but that's okay i'll show you how to fix that so to get this again we went to single line text we clicked one time for a start point then we hit enter because we don't want to rotate our text and then we typed in oblique cavalier and then we clicked off of it. We hit escape to get out of that command. And the way that we get those words to be the correct size to match our metric drawing is come up to that text style formatting box. Remember that? And our height is going to be three millimeters. So we'll put three in there and hit apply and close. Now, if it didn't automatically update yours, then you can come up here to uh, modify properties three. Um, so mine, it didn't automatically update. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Um, but we can type in three here in the modify properties too. So that one updates. Okay, so now we've properly labeled it and we've drawn one of those. We're going to draw the next one as oblique cabinet, and we're going to draw the same thing so you guys can see the difference, okay? So we know since it's the same, our front view is going to be the same, so we can copy some of what we have. So to get the cabinet, we know that the receding lines are the only thing that are half back. So we can copy what we need of our front view, and just use it again. So I want you guys to do a forward selection box. That means click one time, don't hold your mouse down, and just select just this part of it. So those one, two, three, four, five, six lines. And we're gonna choose copy. We'll just choose this little corner for our base point. And then we're gonna come over here, um, not a certain amount, Mine says it's 261 or 238. Um, that's, that's good enough. Just give yourself a little bit of room between each of these. So I just copied just that part of the front view straight over. So now I'm gonna go ahead and copy my receding lines because I still need them, but I only really need half. So I'm gonna skip this one for right now. Actually, let's go ahead and get that one. And then we'll get these two. So we've got two, three, four, five lines that we're gonna copy. Okay, basically just the receding lines after this little view here. And we're gonna copy, and I'm gonna choose this corner as my base point. And then I'm gonna copy that over here as my displacement point to that same corner. But what's gonna happen is I only need half of that, okay? I only need half. Uh, what I could do is go ahead and put a line at the half mark and trim. Or when I copy these other surfaces, I could just put them at the midpoint of those lines, okay? Uh, so 
Either way would be correct. Just copying the services and put them at the midpoint would be the quicker way to do it. Um, so we'll just go surface by surface. We're going to click on just that part. And we're going to go to copy. And I'm going to choose this endpoint as my base point. And then the midpoint over here is my displacement point. Because remember, we just need half of it. We, we only need half of these lines that's going back at an angle. So we can go ahead and trim the other two. So whenever I selected these four lines and went to copy, I chose this corner as my base point, but the midpoint as my displacement point. If you don't have midpoint on your O snap, Come down to your O snap where it has the little arrow beside it and make sure you have midpoint because you, you're not going to be able to do it if you don't have that on. So the next surface back would be this surface here. So I'm going to select those four lines. And I'm going to choose copy. And my base point can be this corner here. And the base point can be anything that's common with your displacement point. So this corner would be common. And to the midpoint of this line would be our next common spot where we need to drop that because we only need half of those receding lines. And remember, you need to do this surface by surface. And we do the frontmost surface first. And then the second one, like this would be the closest up to the front, this would be the next closest. And then on, on this one, it's just the back side that we got to do now. Okay, but we have to copy the receding lines in order to have those. So I'm going to click on the remaining. Actually, I just have to do two lines at a time now because this one would be a little bit different. So I'm going to copy these two lines from this corner to this corner. So we have those two lines. We'll go ahead and do these two lines. So we're gonna copy and we'll just choose a corner as our base point, same corner as our displacement point. Now in uh, all that, when everything's said and done, this midpoint should meet up with the midpoint here because it's the same object, right? So we're going to just take these last vertical and horizontal lines, those last four right there, and we're going to go to copy. We'll come from this endpoint, but remember we're going to the midpoint over here, so it's going to be the midpoint of one of these lines. And then we just trim out everything beyond because we only needed half of it for our receding lines. So you can see the difference. And if we were to look at this, the oblique cabinet does actually look more like the object than the Cavalier. The Cavalier makes it look way too long. So remember that distortion that we talked about? The oblique cabinet looks more like a, a real object. Uh, so we can also just copy our text. And if you didn't get the text in the first one, uh, remember it was single line text. We click for a start point. We hit enter because we don't want to rotate our text. And then we can type in oblique cabinet. And that allows us to see the difference in both of those. Does anybody have questions? There's going to there's going to be a lot of copying, and that's good practice. That's the reason why I'll go ahead and do these obliques with you. This one's a little harder, so we'll do it together. And then I'm going to release you guys to do the other two by yourselves. Okay, so now would be a good time to save our drawing just in case it shuts down on us. So we're going to save these as oblique examples. 
So just file, save as, and go to your folder and type in obliques or oblique drawings. And make sure you put your initials at the end. Okay, so this, this next drawing, we'll go ahead and do the front view. Uh, let's turn ortho on just because it's easier to keep track when we're doing all horizontal or vertical lines. We'll go ahead and create our 114 line. And we're just typing in all of our coordinates. So we don't have to use offset. And then we're gonna uh, come back at this point. We'll go straight up to 36. We're coming straight over 16. We're going down 11. Okay. And I'm following my dimensions, all I'm doing. So now I have a line that's 114, line that was 36, a line that was 16, and a line that was 11. Right out of my dimensions here. And then I'm going to come back at my start point at this corner and go back 57 and up 10. We know that the um, overall height with these little tower pieces on, on the right is 44. So we could add that up and, and you know, find it, but I'm teaching you guys how to follow the dimensions. Okay, so I went up 10, back 57, and I'm gonna make a line straight up because remember, um, where we were is this corner. So I need to make a line straight up. Don't know how high yet because I don't have the distance of this surface, but I'm gonna find that because I know this surface connects with my line that was 11 that I made over here. So I'm gonna bring a line straight over there and then I can come back up from this surface 19 because I do know that was 19. And then from that 19 line, I can come back 16. And I know that comes down to meet that surface again. So I did all of that without having to do any math to figure out what my distances were. And I know I can trim some of this. I won't need these lines anymore. And this long line that I made just to have my spot, I don't need it anymore. So now I have the basics of my front view. I'm not gonna put in any hidden lines because uh, we won't need them in obliques. And we're gonna do the same angle. We'll go ahead and keep our 15 degrees. So this is 64 back in the depth. So any lines now that we make in the depth, we need to make as a receding line that goes back at an angle. So we're going to turn our polar back on. And if by chance you changed your angle, you might just want to double check, make sure it's at 15. So turn polar on and go back to the line command. So this time our depth is 64. So just make sure you're at that 15 degree angle. We'll do a 64 enter. And we can actually copy that line because it's going to be 64 all the way back at every corner. So we might as well copy our line. So we'll click on that line. We'll click on copy uh, this corner as our base point, this corner as our displacement point. And we'll just go all the way across the object. And I know that we don't need 64, like a full 64 right there but we can trim out what we don't need, but it keeps us lined up. So at every corner, except for this one on the interior, did I put that 64 line? And some we know we can go ahead and trim, like this one on the bottom, 
at that 10 dimension, we can trim it out because we know it, it just goes up to that surface. And we see a little bit more of it because now we're in a 15 degree angle instead of a 30 degree angle. Okay. So now, uh, as far as this left side of the object, we're pretty much done there. We just got to make our line straight over and straight down. So we can go ahead and do that. We're just connecting the endpoints here. We know that this is going to come down. We don't really know how far yet. Um, it looks deceiving because it looks like we should just stop right there, uh, but it's actually a little bit further because we're going to have a place cut out here in the middle. So just drag it out about the same as mine. Then our next step, let's go ahead and make a line from this endpoint to this endpoint and make a line straight down here. And we'll box this in and we'll come back and put our 16 on both sides and then this do it that way and meet in the middle to make that U shape. So we have our pretty much our whole thing boxed in. We're just gonna come back and do a line over top of a line and type in uh, 16 from that back corner. And then once I get that 16, I know it goes over in a straight line, which would be a 180 degree line from here over to the other one. And I can do the same thing from this side. I can click on line, go back over top of that same line, 16, and then just make sure I'm at 180 degrees so it can meet on the other side. So now I've just got to make some lines down 19 on those two corners and it's gonna let me meet up with that line in the middle. So go back to the line command, click on one of these corners, type in 19. Okay, um, I could go ahead and make the line back 15. Don't really know how far back to go, but if I wanted to do it that way, I could. Or I could have made this 19 line first and it would have met up where it needed to. But either way, we needed these two lines down 19 and then this line. So I'll I'll have to trim a little bit. And I know I need the same line on this side. So what I'm going to do here is just copy. I know I need this one and this one. I could copy this one here, but I won't see it. So I'm just I'm not going to copy it because then I'd have to delete it. But those two lines, I will see some of those. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click on copy. This point is my base point. And then this corner is my displacement point. So now I can kind of see where I need to trim right in here. I know where to trim up to this point now. And all I need is one more line straight across right there at those two corners. So I can make that line. And then I'm basically just trimming out after that. And zoom in, make sure that, you know, um, actually we, we will trim this line. I forgot that was not part of it. So in the end, it's going to look like this. And again, we won't worry about our holes. So these are not terribly hard, but it is a different way of looking at it. Uh, back before they had all this computer generated software where you could do 3D models, this was the way you saw a part as it rotated. So you'd have to draw it like every 15 or every five degrees and watch how it would kind of rotate around. Um, so that's basically what our solid modeling software is doing is redrawing it every few degrees so you can see how it's rotating. So 
behind the scenes, it's regenerating every so many degrees when you're rotating it in something like SolidWorks. Uh, back whenever I had to go through school, we didn't have 3D modeling software. So we actually had to do revolutions where we drew them every so many degrees. And, um, you know, it's, it's pretty hard because you lose track of what line goes where. All right, so uh, this, of course, is a Cavalier because we drew it full size back. So we can copy, we can copy that down. And just so we'll, you know, know what it is. And we can do the cabinet just like we did here on this side. Uh, so remember, we're going to take it surface by surface. So the first thing we'll do is copy this. And you might have to do several selection boxes. Whenever I tried to get all of it, it was selecting some of this stuff. Um, some of that we will need, but I want you guys to be careful that you're not confusing yourself and copying too much at one time. So just get this front view with the vertical and horizontal lines and we'll copy that over. The next thing would be some of these receding lines. So we'll get all of the first few receding lines. So anything that's attached to the actual corners of this first front surface. Okay, so once you have those selected, just choose a common base point with a common displacement point. So now what we're doing, uh, the next thing that would be half right here is this back surface, okay? So instead of trying to copy this over because we trimmed out right here where we wouldn't see, that's not necessarily gonna be the same spot that we would need to trim out. So we're just gonna make those lines at the halfway mark. So we're going to do just the line command at the midpoint. And then um, that's going to put us at the halfway mark for the whole thing. So remember this line, we don't exactly know where to trim just yet. So I'm just going to bring it straight over. But make sure you're in a zero angle when you do that. So I know I can trim out this back part. Front part, we still got some work to do. So in this front part, um, we can bring this line over and this line over and copy that. But we're copying it at the midpoint. So the base point would be this back corner and then we'll copy it to the midpoint of the other line. Now we could redraw all of this and just take half of our uh, depth dimensions, but you know we're in AutoCAD, so let's be efficient. Let's just copy things. And then we can trim out what we know we're not gonna need. We know that we won't see this line now. Uh, I should have copied this line over with it, but that's okay. We'll copy it next. So this is going to be like a three-step process just to get this little back part because um, we still have this line to do, this surface, and, and then these other receding lines. So we're going to click on this line, go to copy, and just choose that same point there. I'm going to delete this for just a second so you guys don't get confused. That's the other side of um, this line, and we still might need some, but um, I think it's going to be very confusing if we leave it in there right now. 
So all I did, I brought this line over here. Now the next step would be to get this surface that goes with it. And copy that. Um, let's go from this corner to this midpoint. Okay. And, and then we're trimming. And you can see here that we're overlapping with the front part. So we'll actually trim that too. So that's what it's going to look like. Then the next step would be to take those receding lines and copy those over. So this is the reason why we have to do step by step because each of these surfaces are at different spots and we have to do half of it as we go. So we have those lines, we'll copy these back to Um, let's do this endpoint to this midpoint here. And if all of this copying confuses you, draw a regular front view and take half of all your dimensions and, and just do it like we did the first one. But then this is what we end up with. Okay. So again, we can copy our label down and have that label. Now you're gonna do all of these on the same sheet. So after you get finished with all of them, just make sure that they kind of line up. And when you come over to your layout, you're just gonna, you're gonna do a zoom extents. And I want them, you're gonna have, a two for each one, so you'll have eight in here, but I want them to be as, you know, centered as possible. You don't have to do a scale, but you do want to have everything on here centered, uh, not like off the screen like that, or, you know, not like way up in the corner. You, you know, make it look good. And then you'll lock your viewport and your scale and your title block is going to be titled NTS, not to scale, capital N, capital T, and capital S. And then you'll just fill this in. Um, so you'll have all eight of these on one.